Pinup models past and present have faced a mixed reception, riding the line between pop art and erotica. From bicycle girls to today's alt models, this is the untold truth of being a pinup model. What's the origin of the term pinup? Starting in the mid 19th century, burlesque performers participated in variety shows in which they performed on stage, acting, dancing, and singing. These shows heated up over the decades. Eventually, they transformed into the first strip teases, although performers remained partially clothed throughout. To excite professional interest, burlesque performers included scantily clad or even nude photos on their business cards. In her book, Pinup Girls, Feminism, Sexuality, Popular Culture, Maria Elena Bushik explains how the performers pinned these cards in green rooms or tucked them in the frames of mirrors. Not only did this tradition give birth to the term pinup, but it provided many of the poses used in later images. These sexy pics also garnered another name, cheesecake. The slang was a publicly acceptable term for semi-nude and nude pictures of women in the early to mid-20th century. It started with a photo of a Russian diva named Elvira Amazar snapped by George Miller in 1915. After seeing the image, an editor in New York declared, why this is better than cheesecake. The rest is history. Of course, women aren't the only ones featured in sexy imagery. Male pinups also exist, first enjoying popularity in the 1940s and becoming known as beefcakes. Beefcakes have sold countless calendars featuring everything from shirtless farmers to firefighters and even sexy priests. Whether scantily clad or nude, pinups excel at leaving something to the imagination. They also understand that just about any activity can appear sensual. Images from daily life showcasing overt flirtation or domesticity often feature predominantly in pinup art. Presumably, scenes of domesticity provide comfort to homesick soldiers who consume these images during both world wars. During World War I, racy postcards of Miss Fernand circulated in the trenches. Born in the 1890s, Miss Fernand left few clues about her early life. But French photographer Jean Gelou snapped her semi-nude and nude photos in the 1910s and the 1920s. The American government also got in on the pinup craze, with a division of pictorial publicity created in 1917. The division crafted propaganda to support the war efforts, including sexy pictures and artwork for the troops. What did all of these images have in common? The art of the tease. Soldiers even received free pinup images during World War II to keep up morale, and World War II saw the most prominent pinup images painted on the noses of bombers. Playboy magazine launched in 1953 to great success, and founder Hugh Hefner modeled his publication on pinup girl art. A veteran of World War II, Hefner understood the appeal of pinup models in the tees. From their scarlet lips to their wasp waists, pinup girls have long been purveyors of the American dream girl. For men in the trenches of World War I or bomber planes of World War II, pinups represented symbols of what they fought for. As the pinup art expert Louis K. Meisel put it, these were the girls that the boys who fought in World War II and the Korean War came back to marry. Gee, it'll be like doing time in the brig till we hear from you. I don't know what you mean, but it sounds awful nice. It's no coincidence that the most successful pinup girls learned to walk the line between innocence, grace, and sensuality with ease. But pinup culture hasn't remained locked in a time capsule. Although men once devoured images of wholesome, innocent, and naive women who incited lust without acknowledging it, today's crowd is attracted to a different vision of femininity. Today's pinups are resourceful, tough, and intelligent, like Mia Jovovich, Kate Beckinsale, and Angelina Jolie. Although perhaps counterintuitive, many pinup models report that modeling has helped them overcome body image struggles. Today's standards of beauty prove more inclusive, with women of every shape and size represented. The same goes for those boasting tattoos and piercings. Pinup girls come in all shapes, sizes, and colors, but it wasn't always that way. In the 1940s and 50s, some racist photographers refused to work with black pinup models. They claimed the girls proved less photogenic. Fortunately, now pinup models of all races are represented in the vintage fashion world. What kind of lived experiences do black pinup models report? Lady Eccentric said that she has found that the vintage scene was less prejudiced than most of society. She thinks that maybe her debut came at the right time, when society was becoming more accepting. Alternatively, her ethnic diversity may have simply been embraced. Either way, she feels like it has been nothing but love. What does she attribute her success to? Hard work, education in the field, and staying true to herself. Asian models have faced challenges working in the vintage fashion sphere. Depending on where they live, getting vintage clothing can prove difficult. They often have to fight against harmful stereotypes such as the notion that pinup is for Caucasian women alone. Yet success is still possible. According to Miss Lily Laurent, her experience of being an Asian-American pinup girl has been surprisingly rewarding. 
She says she never set out to be a pinup girl. She's always considered herself a geeky, shy, and awkward kid. She attributes her presence on social media to her success in the pinup community. Despite its military origins, pinup art isn't for the male gaze alone. Women appreciate and even emulate pinup fashion. Maria Elena Bushek argues that, from its birth, the pinup has served as an image that pointedly eliminates the explicit representation of a sexual act by eliminating the presence of men and generally other women and strategically covering the genital area. Pinup images also represent a celebration of feminine beauty and allure. Many models see this as primary to their obsession with the art form. Indeed, many of the primary connoisseurs of pinup art today are women. Three of the most talented artists of the pinup golden age were women, Joyce Ballantyne, Pearl Frush, and Zoe Mozart. They helped set an exclusive standard of beauty as pinup artists. Joyce Ballantyne and Zoe Mozart even used themselves as models, arguing no man could know the female form like a woman. These women proved trailblazers in a male-dominated arena. They actively shaped their masterpieces, and Louis K. Meisel argues that the feminine gaze is easily recognized in their work. He explains that female artists portray very beautiful, idealized women, and the images are less erotic. Like these female artists, today's pinup girls control their identities and how they get represented. Many people have the misconception about what it's like to be a pinup model. It's far less glamorous than most think. It comes with wardrobe mishaps, less than stellar photoshoot conditions, and more. Model Angelina Fernot discusses enduring bitterly cold weather for one photoshoot where she wore little more than a bikini top, shorts, and stilettos. Besides enduring freezing temperatures, Fernot has also dealt with plenty of reactions from those who find out she's a pinup model. These include everything from admiration to disdain. She writes, In my experience, there are two types of reactions. They either love it or they hate it. It is always a very strong reaction one way or another, with arguments they follow either side. Another pinup model, Micheline Pitt, spends time debunking the so-called glamour associated with working in the pinup industry on her blog, Pinup Girl Style. She argues that all pinup models are as guilty of giving admirers an idea of this glamorous lifestyle. In reality, she thinks the truth is far from it. For example, she explains that maintaining a day job is necessary for the vast majority of the models. As a result, the vintage fashion lifestyle remains a constant work-life balance challenge. Anyone can pursue pinup or alternative modeling, and the same goes for those interested in becoming burlesque performers. But you need to invest serious time, dedication, and work into carving out a niche. What does it take to make it in this field? Forging a successful career requires persistence and long-term dedication. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. That's Maxie. You can learn from her. She knows all about the three essentials. Clothes, pose, and expression. Pinup models also know how they get the look, whether a signature, pose, tattoo, beauty mark, or hair color. The best pinup girls build a niche in what makes them unique. Pinup girls also realize how important studying the history of the genre is. That way, they have a firm grasp on the best poses to use and the looks they wish to cultivate. Experienced models recommend finding a pinup or alt model to emulate and then studying how she became successful. That way, young models can capitalize on the lessons already learned by their predecessors. Alt and pinup girl models must also prove adept at doing their own hair and makeup. And they need to build a stellar collection of beautiful vintage clothing by cultivating a love of the cuts of the dresses, the flowing fabrics, the high heels. Pinup gurus also urge potential models to cultivate a strong sense of self-worth and confidence, two qualities that the best models possess in droves. Micheline Pitt says that pinup models also invest significant cash into their careers. In 2012, she created a list of pinup model expenses. They include $125 or more for hair and makeup and $250 to $450 for an excellent professional photographer. Those who know people in the biz might be able to get a discount on hair, makeup, or photography. But the best models know that these are areas where they shouldn't skimp when establishing a modeling career. Pinup and alt modeling come with a startup investment of between $375 and $575 at bare minimum, according to Pitt. Between 2012 and 2021, inflation led to a cumulative price increase of 18.34% in 2013 dollars. With this accounted for, that's a startup price of between $445 and $680. Shelling out money for vintage clothing also means this hobby requires serious budgeting. For this reason, some pinup models even sew their own clothes. According to Ms. Mon Mon, venturing into the DIY pinup girl universe doesn't have to be complicated. Dedicated pinup models have some serious sewing time under their belts, and they can gain access to a wide variety of patterns online to help them get their vintage fashion fix on. When you hear the term pinup girl, who comes to mind? Many think of Betty Page, the queen of the pinups, and Dita Von Tees. 
These two iconic women proved wildly successful, but they also represent exceptions to the rule. Dita Von Teese has done everything from burlesque to exotic dancing and adult movies. Nevertheless, for some, her biggest claim to fame was marrying Marilyn Manson. As for Betty Page, while she enjoys immortality as a pop culture icon, the real-life woman lived a less than idyllic life. She started modeling at age 27 and quit seven years later when she decided that she was getting too old. After her modeling career ended, she suffered from mental illnesses and had several failed marriages. She vanished entirely from the spotlight, refusing to let photographers take her picture. She wanted the public to remember her at her height of her beauty. But remarkably, she made one final appearance at the 50th anniversary of Playboy in December 2003, entering with Anna Nicole Smith. Nevertheless, Paige set a high standard to follow. She embraced everything that a pinup girl could be. Hugh Hefner described Betty Page's appeal as a combination of wholesome innocence and fetish-oriented poses that is at once retro and very modern. And Page even has a planet named after her, 184784 Betty Page, a testimony to her stellar fame. Pinup models often work for pennies, if not for free. They do it for the love of the arts rather than a desire to become rich. Micheline Pitt sets the record straight when it comes to earnings as a pinup model. I do not model for a living. I do not, nor have I ever made any real money to survive for a living to pay my bills as a model. I have never been paid for a magazine cover or article. That is correct. You read that right. Never paid. No real money. Her message couldn't get more straightforward. That said, she does go on to clarify that she has received modeling compensation. But this compensation doesn't begin to cover the costs associated with staying in tip-top shape to keep getting work. She estimates being a minimum of $1,000 in the hole for her modeling career, but she also has no regrets and loves the life she leads. Many people go into debt for their hobbies. Hunters and fishermen spend thousands on gear, and the same goes for classic car lovers and art collectors. But pinup models go in realizing that their hobby isn't going to make them rich or famous. Angela Frenat echoes Pitt's sentiment, noting that she loves being a model. She gets great joy seeing a man pick up a metal sign or a calendar that has her picture on it. The best pinup models understand that perception matters, and they pursue this field because they love it. They have control over how they are seen and what image they ultimately wish to cultivate. Angela Frenat articulates it well when she explains that almost everyone wants to be noticed or recognized. For her, pinup is just one of the ways she chooses to do it. She likes to play a role that's sexy, revealing, and more provocative than her real life. The vintage fashion sphere also places a strong emphasis on differentiation and being oneself rather than trying to conform to a preset mold. Sure, the girls might pose in 1950s garb, but may have a tattoo sleeve or two to accompany it. Pinup culture doesn't have an age limit. It embraces diversity and individuality, and it's this inclusivity that is used to argue that pinup fashion is truly feminist. But what about those individuals that decry objectification? Pinup girls, by their very career choices, acknowledge the subject is far from a black and white issue. Instead, human sexuality is a nuanced topic based on life experiences. In her book, Erotic Faculties, Joanna Frew offers a simple solution to the controversy, arguing, as long as I am an erotic subject, I am not averse to be an erotic object. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about popular culture are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.